Hi there, Mark Pulley with Yahweh Yeshua Assembly in Fort Myers, Florida, bringing you another teaching from Yah's Laws and Commandments. I pray that your week is going good. I pray that when you listen to this, you've, you are in health, your joy is strong, your peace, your shalom is, is abundant, and that you have the victory. Thank you for tuning into our channel, and I pray as always that this teaching, hopefully it's not too long, this teaching which I received this morning, uh, something I've been searching to understand, um, in my understanding, maybe you understand it already, but my understanding, to understand this subject about what it means to not be under the law but under grace who was that written to why was it written what did paul mean what did he not mean what are the things that we have been taught for it to mean what most of us have been taught that it means is that we don't have to uh, obey the commandments we don't have to obey the feasts, the Sabbaths. You know, those have been done away. That's what we've been taught that it means. But Paul, who's the writer of this, did not mean that. He said, Acts 24, when he's testifying, he said that he keeps all the Torah all the prophets he lives accordingly and so if he lives accordingly and yet he was born from above he was spirit filled and we're going to learn what it means to walk after the spirit does that mean we're following some invisible spirit or does that mean that there's a third person that we're supposed to follow Here's an interesting fact. If you read all of Paul's letters, his introductions, he, he says, May the love of our Father and the fellowship of the Son of the Messiah be with you. Never once does he mention a third person called the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is Yah's Spirit. Yah's Spirit. It is the Spirit that comes out of the inner being of Yah Yahshua to come to us, to quicken our mortal bodies, to lead and guide us into all truth. And so let's go to Galatians 5 and we're going to talk about what it means to be under the law. And at the very end, there is some very good news have you ever been bombarded in your thoughts in your mind in your images in your dreams even you know where you just feel condemned maybe because you haven't kept you haven't kept Yah's laws and commandments I know I have because you missed it or because you just didn't do it your flesh got the better of you. We've all been there. Before we go to Galatians 5, well, I can just quote this to you. In, in 1 John chapter 3, verse 4, it says that sin is the breaking or is the transgression or you could say is the rejecting or it is this, the disobedience to Yah's laws. Let's let's just find that scripture. Uh, let me go to the one John. Uh, I should have pulled it up. Sorry, I should have pulled it up, but I didn't. I was just going to quote it, but so that I don't quote it wrong. Anyways. 
First John chapter 3 and verse 4. It says, Everyone practicing sin also practices lawlessness. That's what my Hebraic roots version says. And then it says, sin is the breaking of the Torah. So sin is the breaking of the Torah. Sin is rejecting of the Torah. So when we reject, when we break Yah's laws and commandments, when we, re when we reject to keep his Sabbath, when we break it, when we disobey it, when we reject his feast days, when we reject his Torah that says that his name is Yahweh, Yah, and we put in their Lord or God, we are rejecting and breaking Torah, and we are in sin, and we are practicing lawlessness. And we know what Yahshua said about those that practice lawlessness in Matthew 7, he's, verse 23, I believe it is. He said, away from me, you who practice lawlessness. Now, in Galatians 5, verse 18, it says, starting in verse 17, for the flesh lusts against the spirit. So what is he referring to? Is he referring to some spirit out in the, in the, in the atmosphere that you can't see? Is he, what is he referring to? Is he referring to an individual person? No. I'll show you what he's referring to. For the flesh, or let's read verse 16. But I say, if you walk in the Spirit, the lust of the flesh will not overtake you. Now I'm going to give you a good definition of what it means uh, what it means to walk in the Spirit. It basically means to obey Yah's laws and commandments. The works of the flesh are disobedience to Yah's law. The fruit of the Spirit is obedience to his law. How clear is that? To say we are not under the law cannot possibly mean you are free to break Yah's law. Why? Because 1 John 3, 4 said sin is breaking the Torah. Sin is rejecting the Torah. The works of the flesh are basically you and I rejecting, disobeying, and breaking Yah's Torah, Yah's laws and commandments. So when it says, but I say, if you walk in the Spirit, if you walk in obeying Yah's laws and commandments, the lust of the flesh, the lust of, you know, that your flesh wants to disobey Yah's laws and commandments will not overtake you. It may come, it may trip you up, but it will not overtake you. For the flesh <coughs> lusts against the spirit or against Yah's laws and commandments. And the spirit against the flesh. And these are opposed to one another 
So if you are not able to do as you desire, so you are not able to do as your flesh desires. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the penalty of breaking the Torah. So if you are led by the desire within you, the passion that is within you to keep the Torah, to keep Yah's laws and commandments, you are not under the penalty of the Torah. You are not under the curse of the law. You have been set free from it. And then it goes into explaining, now the works of the flesh are clearly. And the works of the flesh, and you can read these, this is what it means when you do these things, you are breaking Torah. You are rejecting Torah. You are sinning against Yah's laws and commandments, and you are sinning against Yah. You are practicing these things. You are lawless. And these things are adultery. That's found in the law, isn't it? Impurity, uncleanness, that's found in the law. Lustfulness, that's found in the law. Idolatry, witchcraft, enmity, fighting, jealousy, anger, rivalries, stubbornness, divisions, heresies. All this can be summed up in that you are breaking Yah's laws and commandments. So when you are living according to your flesh, or you could say when you are rejecting Torah, when you are taught not to live according to the Torah, that you don't have to live according to the Torah, you are then being taught that if you live according to these things, Yah's going to be okay with it? No way. No way. It just uh, does not commute, compute. It's 2 plus 2 equals 16. Doesn't add up. But if you read it the way it was designed through a Hebrew scholar, Paul, two people that were just coming into Torah, he was telling them that if you live according to the flesh, you are basically disobeying Yah's laws and commandments. If you are disobeying Yah's laws and commandments, you are letting your flesh govern you. You are letting your flesh control you. But when you are governing yourself, and when your passion is to live according to the Torah, you are not going to live according to these things. And then it says, envying, murders, drunkenness, re reveling, and things like these. It doesn't end there. It just says, things like these, of which I told you before. So obviously, he's gone over these things before. As I said before, that the ones practicing these types of things, if you're practicing day in and day out fornication, if you're practicing day in and day out um, not keeping the Sabbath, if you're practicing day in and day out taking his name in vain, meaning you're calling him Jesus, you're calling him Lord, you're calling him God when his name is Yahweh and his name is Yahshua. It says, these will not inherit the kingdom of Yah. It is just that simple. And then it describes the fruit of the Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit would line up with obeying Yah's laws and commandments. That when we treat one another this way, then we will not be transgressing the law. When we treat one another with love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, meekness, self-control, he said, against such things 
There is no law. There are no other instructions. When you do these things, when you respond to other people, when you treat other people like this, you are not under the penalty of the curse of the law because you are obeying Yah's Torah. Now, do we do this all the time? No, we fall short. But our passion, our desire is to obey them. So in Paul's day, there were Jews who were trusting in their own righteousness for their salvation. And that's who Paul was addressing here. Rather than accepting Yahshua the Messiah and letting Yah be their righteousness. See, we are not saved by keeping the law. We are not saved by following and keeping uh, the Sabbath or by keeping the feast. Those are things we do because we are in right standing with Yah through Yahshua, through His blood, through His atonement, and because He said, If you love me, keep my instructions. Because when we are born from above, the first thing that will take place within you is that Yah will begin to instruct you on how to live, and you are to live a life of obedience to His instructions, and the Torah is His instructions. It is not designed to save you. The blood of the Lamb is what saves you. But when the blood of the Lamb is upon you and you reject His Torah, you reject His laws and commandments, you then come back under the curse of the law. You then come back under the law itself and its curse, and you will suffer the consequences. Now, what this means today is... Those that do not have Yahshua, so they have not accepted Yahshua, they did, have not accepted the Messiah, they have not accepted Him as Savior, as their King, or those who have chosen, after they've accepted Him, to go against His instructions. Those that have accepted him, and they've had a conversion, but they've chosen to live fornicate, in fornication. They've chosen to live in adultery. They've chosen to commit sexual sin outside of marriage. They've chosen not to make Yah and Yahuwah and Yahshua king over their finances by not giving their tithes and offerings to his body, or they've chosen to reject his name, or to reject his feast days, or to reject keeping his Sabbaths. These are people that are back under the curse. Why? Because they are breaking the law. Today it is those that do not have Yahshua or those who have cho chosen to purposely go against, reject, disobey Yah's law again. See, when you're born from above and you are a new creation, you desire to obey Him. Now, you may not have the understanding yet of what you need to obey, but you need to obey it. But you have the understanding that you need to obey. You may not know what specifically you need to obey, but you know you need to obey something, and you start obeying what you know to obey. And everybody knows you can't um, commit fornication and be in right standing with Yahweh. Everybody knows that. You cannot sleep with your neighbor's wife. You cannot cover your neighbor's things and be in right standing with Yahweh. You can, your, your, your speech. I personally have issues with people that say they're born again 
and they're F-bombing this and F-bombing that. Something's amiss. Either they have not yet learned how to transform, transform their language. But see, when I was born again and people, when all the people I know that were born from above, their language changes quickly, if not immediately. They know not to say certain things. So what is the deal? They are letting their flesh dominate them. They're rejecting the Torah in that area of their life. And if they are, they are putting themselves right back under the law. They are putting themselves right back under the curse of the law. How many people, they say they love the Messiah, they say they love Yah, they say they love the Father, they say they love His Word. They go and worship Him. They may even bring their tithes and offerings to the body. They may pray, they may fast, but they're still doing things that they know is wrong. They willingly do them. You are putting yourself back under the curse of the law. And the curse of the law, and you putting yourself back under it, is who Paul's referring to here. He said, you will not inherit the kingdom of Yah. That's strong words, but we need to hear what the scripture is saying and not what, you know, pumpkin pie and whipped cream fluff teaching is saying. Now let's go to Romans chapter 6. And we'll begin in verse 14. Romans chapter 6. And verse 14. It says, For your sin... And we know sin is breaking the Torah, breaking Yah's laws. For your sin shall not master it over you. For you are not under the penalty of, the, of law breaking, but under grace. So when your heart is to obey Yah's laws and commandments, and your passion is to obey Yah's laws and commandments, and say you you break you don't keep the Sabbath for some reason, or you you don't keep a feast day or whatever. You are you are not under the curse, but you are under grace. Why? Your heart is to break it, is to keep it. Your heart, it's just that your flesh got out of hand and you jerked it, you slapped it, you you crucified it, and you're bringing it back under the Torah. And you are telling it, you will obey it. What then shall we, shall we sin? What then? Question mark. Shall we sin because we are not under the penalty of the Torah? What did Paul say? But under grace, he said, no. Heavens, no. No, 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 no. We should not teach or we shall not think or we shall not believe that it's okay to purposely go against breaking Yah's laws and commandments and think we are in right standing with Yahweh. No, 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 no. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves as slaves for obedience, you are slaves to whom you obey, whether sin whether of sin to death or of obedience to righteousness. So when you give in to that adultery, when you give in to that fornication, when you give in to not um, bringing your tithes to Yah's body, when you do not keep the Sabbath, we get, when you give in to it and you willingly reject it, you willingly reject, we do not have to keep the feast, Yah, Yah, Yah. You have become a slave to what you've just surrendered to. And when you've surrendered to sin, you've became a slave to the curse. 
and you are under the curse and the curse will affect your life and you can do all the fasting you can do all the praying of the prayer points you can do all the spiritual warfare you want but until you come back to obeying Yah's laws and commandments until you come back to obeying what is written until you have a heart by Yah's spirit that would be a, a heart that would want to follow his Torah you're going to continue experiencing things that Yahshua paid the price for you to be delivered of and you will be under the curse you will be under the law you will be under that penalty hopefully that gives you some clarity now for time's sake I'm not going to go over all the scriptures that Paul says this same thing in but if you research it yourself you will see that sin is disobeying Yah's Torah so when you disobey and you willfully disobey Yah's laws and commandments his instructions no matter what it is you are under the curse you are under the law you are under the spirit of death you are under sickness and disease you are under everything Deuteronomy 28 verse 15 and following says will come to you because you disobey Yah's Torah but now if you have a passion and you have been born from above and you are willing to obey Yah's laws and commandments I remember when Linda and I we were living together and we were committing sin we wanted to get right so we went to our pastor brother Mike we said what should we do he said you need to get married I said when should we get married when can we get married he asked me when do you want to get married I said today right now that was my heart I didn't care about ceremony I didn't care about who is coming Linda and I both didn't care about all the fluff that everybody else spends millions of dollars on we didn't care about that well that was Thursday before Mother's Day and he said okay get your license and so it took us a couple days to get our license and my heart was not to commit any sexual sin or have any sexual relations with with Linda till we get married was I able to keep it no I I let my flesh dominate me but nonetheless that was my heart and I just felt so yuck after the fact and when you feel that yuck that means your spirits alive and Yah's telling you that wasn't right and so the Monday after Mother's Day May 7th 1984 we got married there's only a few people came some of my family most of my family members did not come my mother did not come she actually disowned me and then later repented because I wasn't getting married quote unquote in the church Catholic Church my own sister did not come fortunately my one niece who lived there did come with her husband Terry which today that means the world to me they came and supported us and our born-again spirit-filled uh, family did come and support us what did we have for our reception my sister-in-law and her husband and my mother-in-law took us to Chudan in Roswell that's what we had for a dinner we had no wedding cake and the next day we went back to work why we didn't have no money to go on a, on a, on a honeymoon but our honeymoon has been ever since Linda and I even these many years 19 20, uh, 2021 these many years 37 years 38 years whatever it is it's just awesome we have peace in our marriage why 
our passion is to obey the scriptures and that's what it was when we were in the church was to obey the scriptures we did not know about the Torah we did not know about the Sabbath we did not know about all those things no one ever taught us but when we found out about it we had a decision to make the way of the way the church taught us or the way of what the scripture says and we immediately went the way of the scripture we became Torah observant and so my encouragement to you is obey the Torah you may fall short but if you have a heart to obey you will keep at it and you will keep at it and you will put an end to willful sin willful disobedience willful rebellion why because when you do that it don't matter if you think you're in right standing you are not according to the scripture if you are willingly rejecting you know it's right but all these other things come in line and you don't do it you are in serious trouble with Yahweh you are not in right standing you are not saved you are not going to inherit the kingdom of Yahweh that's what Paul said don't get mad at me that's what Paul said when you let your flesh dominate you you will not inherit the kingdom of Yah when you let your flesh dictate to you how you are to live you will not inherit the kingdom of Yahweh now I have some good news this is what I'm trying was trying to get to Romans 8 have you ever felt so condemned because maybe you perfectly have not kept a feast day a Sabbath you had to work on a feast day or you've had to um, you know just somehow you missed it you sinned you got angry you didn't treat your brother right what whatever okay now get ready hold on to your hat oh my hat blew off <laughs> just kidding Romans 8 1 he says Paul says now there is now therefore no condemnation to those in Yahshua Messiah in Yahshua Messiah who do not walk according to the flesh who do not walk according to the disobedience willingly of breaking Yah's law so if you are a person like myself who does not desire to break Yah's law his instructions his commandments his ways his word there is no condemnation for you it's not about perfect keeping it because you can't Yahshua did Yahshua did perfectly keep it but when you are in Yahshua you will have a desire to obey his laws and commandments and when you have that desire this says there is no condemnation to those in Messiah who do not walk according to the flesh so if you're walking according to breaking Yah's law you're condemned you're condemned Yahshua condemns you Yahweh condemns you man will condemn you the scripture condemns you but if you are walking in the Messiah and your heart is walking in obedience to following Yah's Torah because sin is breaking the Torah lawlessness is rejecting renouncing believing you don't have to do it that is sin but it says here there is no condemnation 
to those in Yahshua who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. And according to the Spirit means according to obeying Yahweh's laws and commandments. According to following Yahweh's instructions, His laws and commandments. If you love me, Yahshua said, you will keep my commandments. For the law of the Spirit of life which is in Yahshua Messiah has set me free from the law of sin and death. The spirit of death. Thinking about dying. Thinking about the pain when someone else's die dies and you are left here alone, separated from them, the mourning that goes with it. When you obey Yahweh's laws and commandments, the law of the spirit of life, which is in, in Messiah, will separate you, will set you apart from the law of sin and death, and that you will not experience the law of sin and death. You will not experience the mourning of the law of sin and death. You will not experience the mourning and the grief and the sorrow that is so depressive that, that it wants you to give up life. You will not experience that. Why? Because there is no condemnation for those who obey Yah's laws and commandments and that the Messiah has set us apart from the law of sin and death. Now that doesn't mean you won't miss your loved one like my um, nephew who I was very, very close to passed on September 12th into his next assignment which is in eternity for eternity. His assignment on earth was over and Yahweh came and took him and he went into the eternal realm celebrating his Messiah, rejoined together with his family, with my mom, with my dad, with his family, his mother, and his grandmother and grandfather, and our cousins and uncles and, you know, so on and so forth. They were waiting for him. He was joined to them. His suffering, because he had diabetes, he had cancer, was over. Now, I mourned for a day or two, um, but the, I think it was like four or five days, but on, that was on the Sunday that he passed, um, like between 2 and 5 in the morning. I learned about it about 11. So about 3, 4 days, every time I thought of him, I cried, I mourned, I missed him. I kept expecting when my phone rang, it would be him because he was always calling and I was always calling him. But on the Sabbath, when I kept Yah's Torah, sundown Friday, it disappeared. I even put it on Facebook. I shared it with my wife that I said, amazingly, the anointing of the Sabbath is upon me now and the grief and sorrow is gone. Now I thought of them and I missed them. A few times tears came, but it's not like it was those first few days. The law of sin and death I was separated from. So that doesn't mean you won't miss them. It doesn't mean you won't cry in missing them. But it does mean that you do not fear someone else dying and you being separated from them because the law of sin and death is over. You just go on, keep living your life to the best of your ability. So on and so forth. So the oppression, the depression of the law of sin and death has been over. So there is no condemnation for those that are living and following after Yah's spirit, which means to live 
by and follow Yah's laws. So when you are following Yah's spirit, when you are living by Yah's spirit, like in verse uh, 9, it says, Since the Spirit of Yah dwells in you, if anyone has not the Spirit of Messiah, this one does not belong to him. What does that mean? That means if you are not obeying Yah's laws and commandments, you are not in the Messiah. You do not belong to him. Now that is that is tough. Now, when I got born again, I was desiring to obey the commandments, and I was desiring to obey the things I read in the Scripture and what I was taught from a Western perspective. But then when Yahshua came and opened my eyes and I began to become Torah-minded, Hebraic-minded, I began to see things in a totally different light, in a Hebraic light, then I grew in my obedience. I didn't just start obeying. I grew in my obedience. I continued obeying things that were, were in Torah, but then I added to it, like the Sabbath, the commandments, the, the feast days, so on and so forth, things I should eat, things I should not eat, like I do not eat pork, I do not eat shrimp, I do not eat lobster, I do not eat scallops, which I used to. Why? The Torah says it is not food. They are uh, things that Yah created to clean the earth with. And then it says, verse 11, But if the Spirit of the One, having raised Yahshua from the dead, dwells in you, and how does He dwell in you? He comes in you by conversion, and He remains in you by your obedience of the Torah. Let me say that again. The Spirit, Yah's Spirit comes in you through you being born from above, through your conversion, and remains in you when you obey Yah's laws and commandments. If you keep resisting, you keep rejecting, you keep denying, you keep defying, that Spirit will depart. And there will be no more sacrifice for you, the book of Hebrews says. Unless you come back to Yahshua, confess your sin, and, and get back into obeying the Torah, obeying His laws and commandments, and re-receive Yahshua as Messiah, and let His Word, let His Torah, let His laws and commandments be written on your heart, and then to live accordingly. Living accordingly is a testimony that Yah's Spirit dwells within you, and Yah's Spirit includes obeying Yah's laws and commandments. You cannot have Yah's Spirit and then defy willingly Yah's laws and commandments. You cannot do that. It will not work that way. So if you are saying you are of Messiah and you are rejecting Torah, you are rejecting Yah's laws and commandments, you are rejecting His instructions, you are rejecting His feast days, you need to rethink and look at things through a Hebraic perspective. Remember, this Bible was written by a Hebrew Elohim to a Hebrew people, and we have a Hebrew Messiah, a Hebrew Savior, and His name is Yahshua. Yahshua. Hamashiach. All right. So, living and following after Yah's Spirit is simply to live and follow by Yah's laws and commandments. And if the Spirit of the one having raised Yahshua from the dead, verse 11 of Romans 8, the one having raised Messiah from the dead will also quicken or make alive your mortal bodies through His indwelling Spirit, through Yahweh's Spirit, which also would include that you will be quickened in your mortal body 
The more you obey Yah's, law, Yah's laws and commandments, the more the quickening of the Spirit. So I propose to you, suggest to you, that obeying Yah's laws and commandments and living under the Spirit is one and the same. It goes hand in hand. When you live to obey Yah's laws and commandments, and that's the way it is for Torah-minded, born-from-above people, they live, they love, their passion is to obey Yah's laws and commandments. There is no condemnation for you. So if the enemy's condemning you, it's it's not of Yah. Reject it, resist it, quote the word, stand on the word. There is no condemnation. I'm living to the best of my ability according to Torah. And through the blood of the Lamb and pow by, by and by the power of living according to the Torah and the Spirit, I am not under any condemnation. As a matter of fact, the law of the Spirit of life in Messiah has made me free, has made me free from all torment, all oppression, and all condemnation that comes because of sin and death. When you disobey willfully Yah's Torah, Sin and death will be your, will come upon you and oppress you and discourage you and bind you. But when you live to obey his commandments, the law of sin and death is broken. You are separated from it. And the torment and the oppression of sin and death is destroyed it was laid upon the back of Yahshua and by his shed blood and by his broken body on the tree and through you accepting Messiah and living according to his spirit which is to live according to his laws and commandments You are saved, you are redeemed, you are delivered, and you are set free. Hallelujah. I pray this helps you because it helped me. It broke the, the back of any condemnation. It broke the back of any fears and anxieties of losing loved ones. That I, we are separated from the oppression. Because when you have experienced the oppression of loss of life, like I did when my dad died when I was 11 years old, it oppressed me for a number of years. And it was miserable. It was tormenting. And that fear of loss of my wife has always, the, the enemy has always tormented me with it. And he has tormented me with me passing and her being tormented with me not being here. Ain't happening. We will both go together. That is our confession of faith. And no one will be tormented by our passing to the other side. Because we are going to live according to his Torah. And we've been set apart. We've been set apart. Just as Yah came and took Enoch and Elijah to himself to live with them in eternity, my personal belief is when it's time for you to vacate this earth, Yah's coming for you. Yahshua's coming for you. The angels are coming for you. I also believe your family knows you're coming. And they are ready. Yahshua has built your mansion. Your family has helped build your mansion. Ours is going to be in the mountains. 
with a creek running by it, with a couple Siberian Huskies, and whatever your mansion is, when you go from this earth, Yah comes from you. That is my personal belief, and I will reveal that in, my, in weeks and videos to come where I've received that instruction, because everything has to come from the Torah if it's biblical. So I pray this encouraged you. I pray this challenged you. I pray that if you do not passionately and desire to obey Yah's laws and commandments, you reject them. You just don't know about them because your church hasn't taught them. I pray somehow you find this teaching as well as others by other Torah observant men and women ministries that you would learn things that you were never taught. And there are many things we were never taught. And many things that we were taught, like I just taught about the birth of Yeshua, is not in December. It's in the feast and during the fall feast of Sukkot, Tabernacles. So I pray this will would encourage you. I pray this will this challenges you. I pray that you would research the scripture. When Paul said, going back to the beginning, when Paul said you are not under, when you are not under the law, did not mean you are free to break it. You are free because if he was saying that, he was saying you are free, and it's okay to transgress Yah's instructions and it's okay to be lawless it's okay to be defiant of Yah's commandments and see the church has taught this for so long and that's why the world is in the condition it's in because they believe there is no consequences there are consequences it's the law of sin and death and you will be separated from Yah eternity the wages of sin is death but the gift of life from Yahshua it comes because of Yahshua when you receive Yahshua you receive his spirit when you receive his spirit you receive his desire to obey his laws and commandments it's just that simple if we were taught that from the beginning things would be so different in our world to come so I pray that you are led by Yah's spirit Yah's laws and commandments and if so you are not under the law you are not under the penalty of the law you are not under the condemnation that comes from breaking the law but you are set free but the key is like Paul said in, in, in Galatians 5 you cannot yield yourself to the works of the flesh because whatever you yield your members to that's who you will serve if it's sin you're gonna serve death if you think it's okay to break to be lawless and not keep Yah's laws you're gonna experience the law of sin and death you will not inherit the kingdom Paul said but if you obey Yah's spirit which is peace love joy gentleness, makeful, meekness, and all the other things in there. Being consistent, patience. All those are consistent with obeying the Torah. When you obey the Torah, you are obeying the law. When you're obeying the law, you're following Yah's spirit, and you will not come under condemnation. Read those scriptures. Read everything Paul says when he's talking about you're not under the law he is referring to in his days Jews who were trusting in their own righteousness for their salvation and in today's world he's talking to people who have either not received the Messiah as Savior yet or those who have but who purposely go against Reject and disobey Yah's laws and commandments. And they put themselves back under the law. 
when you've been delivered from it, when you receive Yahshua, your willful disobedience to, to disobey Yah's law puts you right back under it. And he said we should not do that. He said we should not disobey Yah's laws and commandments. He said Yah forbid. So study everything he says about it. And you will see this is what he's referring to. Until next time, Yah keep you. Yah make his face shine upon you. Yah be gracious to you. Yah make a way for you where there seems to be no way. And if you want to connect with us, YahwehYeshuaAssembly.com is our email address. Also, you can connect with me, Mark Pulley, on Facebook and MeWe. You can also, we have a, a Facebook page, Yahweh Yeshua Assembly. But until next time, Shalom, Shalom.